live from Santa Clara, California, it's theCUBE, covering Open Networking Summit 2017. Brought to you by the Linux Foundation. Welcome back. We are live in Santa Clara at the Open Networking Summit 2017. Uh, I've been coming here for a couple years. It's a lot of open source going on and storage for a long time, a lot of open source going on and compute for a long time and you know, networking was kind of the last one but we had uh, Martin Casado on. Earlier today he said it was 10 years since he started Nasira and, and now it's a billion dollar uh, revenue run rate inside of VMware. So I think the software defined networking is pretty real. We're excited for this next segment. Uh, Scott Rainovich, been co-hosting all day. Good to see you again, Scott. But we're kind of shifting, we're going to add to open networking, we're going to add to open, um, not compute, but open stack. God, get them all mixed up. We were just open compute project a little while ago. It's all infrastructure, it's all in family. All right, so our <laughs> next guest here representing the open stack uh, foundation is Aduko Banksa. Get that right? She mm -hmm. is the ecosystem technical lead for open stack. Welcome. And uh, Lisa Marie Nafi, you've seen many times. She's now officially the OpenStack ambassador, which if you follow her on Twitter, you would have known that a long time for ago. The for the US. For the US, excuse there's me. There's several others globally, but for the US, yeah. So first off, welcome. Thank you. And what is the OpenStack team doing here at Open Networking Summit? Um, so OpenStack itself is a multi-purpose uh, generic cloud platform. Uh, so we are uh, not just looking into enterprise IT use cases, but also trying to address the telecom and NFB space. Uh, and this is the conference uh, where we are finding many of our ecosystem uh, member companies represented and we are also learning uh, what's new in the networking space, what's the, what are the challenges of uh, tomorrow and how we can uh, start to address them today. Right, because the telco is a very active space for OpenStack as well, correct? That's been a good, a good market segment for you. Yes, it is, a, it is an emerging area. I would say we have more and more uh, telecommunications company around and they are also more and more involved in open source because I think it, uh, it's kind of clear that uh, they are also using open source uh, for a while now, but using open source and participating in open source, uh, those are two different things. So this kind of uh, mindset change and transition towards participating in these communities and uh, going out to the uh, public field uh, and do software development there and collaborate with each other and the enterprise IT segment as well. Uh, this is uh, what uh, is happening uh, today and it is really great to see it. Right, right. And you've seen more and more um, telcos participating in the OpenStack summits. There was an NFV day, I think, even going all the way back to the Atlanta summit and um, and, and certainly in, in Barcelona, Ildico was actually doing one of the main stage keynotes, uh, which was very focused on, um, on, on telco, and, and some of the main sponsors of this upcoming summit are telcos. So it's, there's definitely a, a nice synergy between telco and OpenStack. Now why do you think the telco is just the one that's kind of you know, getting ahead of the curve in terms of the adoption? Scalable, low-class clouds. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I would like to kind of. Right, and we had John Donovan from AT&T said, today that they're either rapidly approaching or going to hit very soon more than 50% um, of software-defined networking within the AT&T network. So if there's any questions as to whether it's real or still in uh, POCs, I think that pretty much says it's in production and, and, and running. Yeah. We found, I'm doing a lot more of the, so I also run the OpenStack user group for the San Francisco Bay Area and, and have done for, for the last three years. And if we're not talking about <laughs> Kubernetes or Docker and OpenStack, <laughs> we're talking about networking. And tonight actually we're going to, uh, the Open Control team is talking about um, some of the stuff they're doing with uh, Open Control and containers, and and sort of just to uh, piggyback off of this conference. And and next week as well, we're talking about the network functionality in Kubernetes um, and OpenStack. If you want to run it on an OpenStack cloud, so uh, it's it's a huge focus, and the user group can't get enough of it. And your guys' show is coming up very very soon. The OpenStack Summit. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. May 8th through 11th in Boston, like Massachusetts. Like right around the corner. Yeah. The incredible moving show, right? It keeps going and going and going. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's going to be 6,000 plus 
people there. The, um, there was just some recent press releases about uh, some of the keynotes that are happening there. There's a huge focus on, you know, I keep calling this the year of the user, the year of OpenStack adoption, and we're really, throughout the meetups, we're really doing a lot to try to so showcase those use cases. So Google will be one that's on stage talking about some really cool stuff they're doing with OpenStack, some machine learning, just really intelligent stuff they're working on, and that's going to be a great keynote that we're looking forward to. Um, Harvard will be up on there, you know, it, not just big name, um, you know, foundation members, but, but a lot of use cases that you'll see presented. So why do you think this is the year? What, what's kind of the breakthrough that it is the year of the user, would you say? Well, I think that just the reliability of OpenStack, I think enterprises are getting more comfortable. There are very large clouds running on OpenStack, more in, in Asia and in Europe, and Ildiko can probably mm -hmm. talk about particularly some of the, um, the telco related ones, but uh, you know, the, the adoption is there and you see more stability around there, more integration with other, uh, I don't know what we call it, emerging technologies like containers, like AI, like IoT, uh, so there's a big push there, but I think enterprises mm. have just, they have adopted it and there's more, expertise out there. We've focused a lot on um, the administrators, there's the there's the COA, the certified administrator, you know, open stack administrator exam you can take. So the operators have come a long way and they're really helping the customers out there get open stack clouds up and running. So I just think, you know, it's seven years now into it, right? <laughs> so we kind of turned the corner. <laughs> So there have been some growing pains you know, with OpenStack, so maybe what, what can you tell us about the metrics today versus you know, say three or four years ago in terms of total installations, maybe breakdown of uh, telecom versus enterprise, uh, what kind of metrics do you have there? I'll let you take that one. Um, we are running, a, continuously running a user survey and uh, we are seeing growing numbers in the, in the telecom area. I'm not prepared with the numbers uh, from the top of my head, but we are definitely seeing uh, more and more adoption in the uh, telecom space, like how you mentioned AT&T. Uh, they are one of the largest uh, telecom operators uh, on board in the community, and they are also very active, showing a pretty great example of how to adopt the software and how to participate in the community to make uh, the software uh, more and more NFV ready and ready for the uh, telecom use cases. We are also have, um, as uh, Lisa Marie just mentioned, uh, the China area and Asia are coming up as well, like we have China Mobile uh, and China Telecom uh, on board as well, uh, or Huawei. Uh, so we have telecom operators and telecom vendors as well uh, around the community. Um, and uh, we're also uh, collaborating with other communities, so uh, like uh, who you see around OPNFE, Open Daylight, uh, and so forth. Uh, we are collaborating with them to uh, see how we can integrate OpenStack into a larger uh, environment uh, as part of the full NFE stack. Uh, if you look into the Etsy NFV architectural framework, OpenStack is on the infrastructure layer, uh, the NFV infrastructure and virtual infrastructure manager uh, components are covered with OpenStack services mostly. Um, so you also need to look into uh, that how you can run on top of the hardware that the telecom uh, industry is expecting. Uh, in, a, in a data center and how to onboard the uh, virtual network functions on top of that, how to put the management and orchestration components uh, on top of OpenStack and how the uh, integration works out. Um, so we are collaborating with these communities and what is really exciting about the upcoming summit is that we, we are transforming the event a little bit. So this time it will not be purely OpenStack focused, but it will be more like an open infrastructure event. We are running open source days, so we will have representation from the communities I mentioned, and we will also have Kubernetes on board, for example, uh, to show uh, how we are collaborating uh, with the representatives of the container uh, technologies. Uh, we will also have Cloud Foundry and a few more um, communities around, so it will be a pretty interesting event, and we are just trying to show the big picture that, that how OpenStack and uh, all these other uh, components of this large ecosystem are and operating th together. And that is going to be 
a super cool part of the summit. So the summit is May 8th through 11th, and on May 9th, it, the CNCF, the Linux Foundation actually behind this, the CNCF day, they're, they're calling it Kubernetes Day, and the whole day will be dedicated, there will be a whole track dedicated to uh, Kubernetes, basically. And um, so they did another call for papers, and it's like a little mini conference inside the conference. So that's kind of what's saying about the, you know, the adoption and of other technologies. I'm sure the Open Stack Foundation is putting those numbers together that you asked about, and, and probably Jonathan or Bryce will stand on stage on the first day and talk <laughs> about them. But what I think is more interesting and what I would uh, encourage people to go, there's a super, super user magazine. Super user does a great job telling the stories of, of what's happening out there and, and some of these use cases and who's adopting this technology and what they're doing with it. Um, and, and those stories are, are more interesting than just you know, the numbers because you can do anything with numbers and statistics, right? But these actual user stories are really cool. So I encourage readers to go out to Super User Magazine and check that out. So like Lego uses it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So a lot of check, information I had to check on real there. fast. They do a good job with that. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Lego alligators. So you, you talked about this uh, this day with uh, the Lynx Foundation. Is there is there increasing amounts of cooperation between OpenStack and the Lynx Foundation? given all the, the projects that seem to be blossoming. Yeah, I, I don't even know that it needed to increase. There's always been nice synergy between the two. Uh, there is, you know, Eileen Evans, who we know very well, was on the board of both. The first woman on both boards. Uh, mm -hmm. She was my colleague for many years at Hewlett Packard. Um, she's still on the Linux Foundation board. And um, <coughs> and there's uh, there's been a lot of synergy between those foundations. They've, they've always worked closely together, and especially things like the Cloud Foundry Foundation that came out of the Linux Foundation has always worked very closely with with OpenStack, the OpenStack Foundation, and the board members, and it's all one big happy family. <laughs> We're all open source, <laughs> yeah. And you talked about the enterprises being, um, you know, they've been using open source for a long time, right? Linux has been around forever. They're really more adopting kind of an open source ethos in terms of their own contribution to the society, you know, contributions back and participating back in. So you see just increased adoption, really, of using the open source vehicle as a way to do better innovation, better product development, and, and to get involved, feed, give, give back to their engineers to get involved in something beyond just their day job. Uh, it is definitely a tendency uh, that is happening. Uh, so it's not just AT&T, like uh, I can mention, for example, NTT Docomo, uh, who now has engineers working on OpenStack code. Uh, they are a large operator in Japan, and um, it is really not something I think that a few years back they would have imagined that they will just participate in an open source community. Um, I've been involved with OPNFE for uh, I think two years now, or two and a half. I'm an OPNFE ambassador as well. I'm trying to focus on the cross-community collaboration. And uh, OPNFE is an environment where uh, you can find many telecom uh, operators and vendors. And uh, it was a really interesting journey to see them, that how they get to know open source uh, more and more, and how they learned how, how this is working, and how, um, how uh, working in public Public, uh, is like and what what the, the benefits are and uh, I remember when uh, uh, a few people from for example Docomo came to OPNFE and they were like a little bit uh, more shy just exploring what's happening and then like a uh, half year later when they uh, started to do uh, OpenStack contributions they had uh, code patches merged into OpenStack they added new functionalities they kind of became uh, advocates of open source uh, and they were like uh, telling everywhere that open source is the way to go uh, and this is what everyone should be doing and why it is so great to collaborate with other operators out in the public so you can address uh, the common pain points together rather than everyone is working on it behind closed doors and trying to invent the same wheel at the same time right. separately. Um, so that was a, a really, really uh, interesting journey. And I think uh, more and more companies are following this example. And uh, not just uh, coming and, and giving feedback, but also more and more participating and doing coding documentation work in, in the community. And yeah. I think if I can understand what I think also the question you might have been asking, the, there wasn't a ton of Python developers uh, in the beginning, and it was really, and everybody's like, oh, how can we get these OpenStack developers in the company? You know, <laughs> it was this huge shortage, and 
Linux was low hanging fruit. It's like, well, why don't we just hire some Linux developers and then teach them Python? <laughs> and, and that's how a lot of OpenStack knowledge came into companies. Um, so that was the trend. And I think uh, enough companies, enough enterprises do see the value of something like Open, OpenStack or, or Linux or, or Kubernetes or whatever the project has, Docker, to actually dedicate enough full-time employees to be doing just that for as long as it makes sense and then maybe it's another technology. Right. Um, but we saw that for years, right, with OpenStack, huge companies, and, and there still are. Not always the same companies, but uh, <laughs> um, depending on you know, what a company needs and where they are, they, they absolutely find value in contributing back to this community. Okay, and you said you got a meetup tonight? I do, Give yeah. a plug for the meetup. Uh, Juniper, it's Open Contrail, talking about Open Contrail and, and containers, um, and it's at Juniper here in Sunnyvale. So if you go to meetup.com slash OpenStack, that's our user group. We're the first ones, so we got that one. <laughs> <laughs> so meetup.com slash OpenStack is the Silicon Valley, San Francisco Bay Area user group. And then next week we're at VMware we're talking about networking and Kubernetes. Right. So. It's always good to be above the fold, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. All right, Nadeko, Lisa Marie, great to see you again, and thanks for stopping mm -hmm. by, and we'll see you in Boston, uh, if Absolutely. not before. Absolutely, we'll both be quite busy. We have four, <laughs> both four presentations <laughs> each. It's going to be a nutty week. So I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in Boston. Always a pleasure, thanks Absolutely. for inviting us. Absolutely, all right, thanks for stopping Thank by. You. Uh, with Scott Ranovich, I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching theCUBE from Open Networking Summit 2017. We'll be back after this short break. Thanks for watching.